All right, guys, this is part two of the uh, 7-3 block 6-9. Um, may have seen part one where we converted the freeze plugs, that sort of thing. Um, we have it set up here on the surfacing machine. Um, do all our stuff here on the surfacing machine. We do uh, do the boring bar on here for the sleeves and, and all that stuff before it tr we transfer it over to the home. But um, basically, there's multiple passes of different things and it just makes it easier to do everything right up on here than doing it on a separate machine or whatever. But um, basically what we're going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a skim cut first and uh, before we go ahead and, and drop the boring bar on. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and get that started. Um, see if I'm forgetting anything here. I don't think so right off the bat. But um, anyway, yeah, here we go. Just a two thousandths cut to start things off to see how the, uh, the deck surface looks and everything afterwards. Um, everything's level in within a thousand um, when we did all this. Um, I'm going to show you how we do this after we do the skin cut here. I'll show you how we level it in and, and uh, how everything compares. But. So far we have a skim cut, about 2,000s cut off the top of this. Um, what we're going to do is go ahead and, and drop the boring bar on this and start cutting the first cylinder. Um, then uh, basically after we're done with that we are going to um, drop the sleeves in, um, which uh, is, is a little custom process we have here that we're set up to do here. Um, and then we're going to go and uh, um, we'll, we'll show you, we've got to cut the sleeves down a little bit in the lathe. And uh, and then uh, um, that'll actually be before we drop the sleeves in, but you, you get the idea. We'll, we'll cut them down in the lathe a little bit, and then we'll drop them in. Um, come back, uh, do a cut, cut uh, which basically takes the sleeves down to the top of the block. Um, and then uh, basically after that, um, we'll drop the boring bar back on, do our finish bore, um, which will bring us within five thousandths of final cylinder diameter. Um, the, the final amount will finish out on the hone. Uh, but uh, basically that takes us there and then we'll come back and we'll do our, our finish cut with um, after we take our, our deck height measurement off the crank which you can see this bar which is located in the main um, basically on the main bearings here it, everything's everything's indexed off that bar so you get a nice straight cut but basically uh, come in and make sure that that we're even with the other bank and uh, that'll wrap up what we need to do on this machine then we'll 
uh, move it over to the hone at the end of the video here. So go ahead and get the boring bar set up and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we got the sleeves uh, ready on the bench here before they're uh, dropped into the block, which is right behind me. Um, what we have to do is we have to actually measure the sleeves, the ODS sleeves, that way we can determine how far to take the block out for the interference fit, which is right at about two thousandths. Um, so we're going to take and measure those up. Um, once we do that, we can go to the block and, and start cutting the diameter out. So um, I have these marked. It's hard to see. You can't see from the camera, but um, there's one, three, five, and seven, which are the cylinders that we're doing on this block here. So we're going to take the mic, we're going to go through and check the sleeves. So So for this first sleeve, we are at four inches, which is the this micrometer here, and obviously we're we're going to a final bore of 4.040. So the sleeve's got to be significantly bigger. But so we're looking here. We have four inches plus two plus 25. So we're at right at four. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we're at four, two, three, two. So four inches, three hundred, four inches, two hundred thirty-two thousandths. And that's at the. This would be in the the end that goes in the block first. It's inserted in the block, and we press it. In. We'll press it in from the bottom side. We want to go ahead and check the other side too. It's probably actually good to check it in a few places. These are pretty consistent sleeves though. So okay, this red. Ford. 4231, which is a thousandth from the other side. We're going to go ahead and check the other side again. Just double check. It looks like that's about right there, too. So, go ahead and we'll change that. And we'll just go ahead and see if maybe it'll. Like it's going to be a little tight on this thing, so go ahead and actually, this one's coming in right at right at three or two thirty. So we got four point two three zero. Let's check the other side. That's pretty consistent there. So. Down 
in that also. Okay, so. I'm gonna go back and check the number one because the final three roll four, two, three, zero, and I think I'll probably get that out of this too. Actually, about a half thou more than those. Right in there, half thou. So, half thou, that's not too close of a tolerance, but we're uh, it's really not necessary at this point. As long as we have, you know, that tolerance half hour so on a press fit, it's not a big deal. So, all right. So now what we'll do now that we have our measurements, this is going to be the. We're going to subtract two thousands from these. So, basically, we're going to come in at four point two two. We'll go ahead and do two two eight on all of them. This is the mic for the boring bar, and so basically what, what you do here is this gives you an actual measurement of the bore size. So it's not like a micrometer where it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's basically specific to the boring bar. So um, I, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it has everything from um, way down here in the three inch range all the way up to four and a half on this micro micrometer. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this to your finished bore that you want and this is actually a calibrated instrument you have to go through and, and to set it you have to go and take like a scrap block or a block that you can use to to take um, a decent amount of material out and you go through and you'll you'll do different bores and you actually have to come down here and adjust it and set it to verify that um, you're you have an accurate instrument basically and so we've done that this thing is, is pretty accurate where it sits now so uh, basically what you do is you go in and you set it for, for what your end bore is going to be. So in that case, 4.228. So I'm going to go ahead and back this out. There's four inches it's showing right there. So it's in, it's in graduations of, of basically um, uh, hundreds or a, uh, <laughs> uh, so it's, any, anyway, you, you have basically 50 thousandths per line on here. So we're going to start out at 4, run it up 4.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So there's 4.2. So now we've got to go 28 thousandths above that. So there's 10, there's 20. 28. Okay, and then you set your stop. So this is set here. So when I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Uh, but basically, we have our dimension for the boring bar, a specific tool for the boring bar to get to the finished bore we need for the slave. Okay, so we've taken this thing, we've already set it up, it's, we've dialed it into the bore center so that the, the boring bar itself is centered to the bore. Um, basically what we need to do now is we need to set our tool bit depth so that we can pull material out of the cylinder wall. So, raise the tool bit up, our set micrometer that we just got done setting, insert this, in here and make sure that it's bottomed out. Now, take, loosen your bit up so you have travel here. Okay. Now, for 
those that aren't sure of the stability of your mic or you're really supposed to take a screwdriver in here and lock it in for your tool bit. The mic stays pretty good. This moves pretty pretty easily, so I usually take and just put a little pressure here and uh, and run the tool bit out. Now, this little sleeve here can screw you up if you're not careful. Now, what else what we're going to do is because this is set for our finish bore, we're not going to be able to take that all in one cut. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a 30, 30 thousandths feeler gauge, which is right right here. So for the first cut, we're going to run it 30 thousandths back from the mic. Lock our set screw in. Verify that our tool bit visually is where we need it to be. Mic out. And then what we can do is we can manually bring the bit down and see where it relates to the bore here. So it looks like we're just going to pull out just a little bit of that bore right there. And we can also rotate the bit around and see concentrically how it is. Now, we already checked all that, so we're good there, but, but, so, good to go there. Tool bit's all set up, machine solid. Go ahead and turn the machine on. Now we have our depth set. So, this part of the tool right here is actually your depth rod, and as this comes down into the bore, this stops the machine. So we have that set so that we can leave about an eighth inch step at the bottom of the bore. And that's going to allow this, the sleeve to rest on it, stop it, keep it from sliding down under pressure, um, that sort of thing. Okay, mainly bring our bit down just to the edge of the cylinder here. On, I'm gonna go ahead and start our cutting action. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll start running it down. bar is nearing our bar is nearing the depth rod and as soon as that does that it will stop the cutting action and turn the, the bit off and we'll raise it up out of the floor. Okay. 
give it a little air. Check it out. It'll be right in there. Okay, so we finished that cut. Now we'll go ahead and use a ten thousandths dealer gauge. I'll take another twenty thousandths out of the cut. Okay, so now that our rough cuts are done, we're going to take the bore mic here. And we double check where we're supposed to be. So, 20,000 short of 4.228. So, we should be at 4.208. bigger than that. Turn the machine off for a second here, get some noise out of here. Actually, 
It's telling me we're a thousandth bigger than we're supposed to be, which isn't a big deal. It's close enough for fueler gauge work. Yeah, so we're at 4.209, so pretty close. So go ahead, and being that it's okay, yep, we'll go ahead and set our mic again. This time we're going to go all the way to the mic itself. Check our bore again. Right on the money, 4.228. Okay. So, now what I'm gonna do, is we'll take and we'll move the boring bar out of the way and it will show you the step at the bottom of the bore that the sleeve will seat up and butt up against, seat up against.
you can see it from up here but the sleeve will actually go down and that's about an eighth inch thick down there at the bottom so the sleeve will sit on that step and what that does is it keeps the sleeve from falling down uh, when you apply head pressure with the head gasket and all that What these three fingers do is center the machine and the board before we go and tighten it up. Do that, that's centered there. And you just back it off so that you can actually rotate it in the cylinder a bit. Give her crank her down. Loosen it up, raise her up, move the fingers, and that's how you center it in the board.
All right, so here we are at the lathe. I'm gonna take these sleeves and shorten them a little bit. Um, shorten them about 80 thousandths. And that should give us what we need. What we need uh, uh, just to sit above the deck height. Um, you have to be really careful when you're turning these and clamping them in the in the chuck like this, especially if you don't have a tailstock big enough. We can't use the bigger tailstock because we're actually taking it right off the end here, and uh, there would be nothing for the tailstock to locate on. So um, we're running it like this, but you got to be really careful that you don't put too much pressure on the on the jaws because these will crack being cast iron and all. So um, good and start speed. Nice slow speed, take really light cuts, and this thing is going to go flying out of the chuck. So, first, before anything, we'll go in and locate on the end here. We'll go ahead and set our DRO, and that'll give us our depth that we can work to. cut
back this out of the way. On the file over the edge. that because our boring bar tool has a has a small radius on the end of it and we want to relieve it for that radius that way the seat, the sleeve uh, fits flat on that step at the bottom of the block so I'll go ahead and I'll do these other three and then we'll go back over to the block and uh, install them
So gives you an idea what what we're looking at here before we go ahead and cut the sleeves down. So we'll go ahead and finish up the other two cylinders here and then we'll get to that. Alright, here's taking the second to last cut. We're evening out the top of the sleeves. There'll be another cut right after this to see even up the sleeves. You may notice the, uh, the bits aren't consistent in their sound. Uh, the, height, the height on them has been set, uh, but the, the diameter of the bits, there's about two bits or a half now off. So I have eight more, eight more tool holders to put on this thing, and, uh, and then I'll tune them all in. But this gives a good enough finish as it is here for these blocks. So. Okay, now we're gonna take another eight thousandths. It's gonna do a skim cut on the deck surface and take all the sleeves down to down to the deck height, and uh, then we'll go from there and do the finished bores on the on the block. All right, we're finished up with our skim cut here. So you can see. That's not even the finish cut yet. We're gonna go through and finish more of them. Then we'll do a finish cut and that'll be it for this machine. We'll go over to the hone after that and finish up the cylinders. All right, so I get the boring bar back on the block. I'm going to make a, an initial cut and then we'll go back and do a finish cut to uh, 5 thousandths under, under size. That way we can finish it out on the, over on the hone. Mic set for four inches, thirty-five thousandths.
So we have our 10 thousandths feeler gauge. This will be the initial, it's basically runs at 20 thousandths under what we, what we, uh, our final bore is here. So gives it a, a pre-bore and then uh, we'll go through and take another 15 off after that. Okay, so go ahead and set the machine for two thousands under after we found the deck surface again. So All right, and there we have it, guys. Finished, decked. Get it over on the on the hone here, a few minutes here, and go from there. All right, so we got the engine block in the hone here. Um, Two twenty grit stones on the hone. 
and then we'll finish it off with a brush. Um, start it off, go through with the drill, and chase all the head bolt holes. And already put some oil on the surface and filled the holes so we could uh, have a little lubrication doing that. Um, other side of the block is already done. We went ahead and just got that out of the way, save some video time. Uh, so show you here on this, the other side, other deck, and uh, go from there. One thing I, I didn't note uh, in the other part of the video is uh, this thing's actually a turbo block too. So uh, I didn't specifically pick it for a turbo block; it just sort of happened to end up that way. Um, but uh, had all non-turbo components, and it. it's obviously been rebuilt before, so they just used whatever they had. But um, anyway, so we get this thing set up here. Our cylinder, lock it in place. And we'll make sure that we have enough out of the top here, otherwise, you start to get a barrel shaped cylinder. So. We have our stroke set. Obviously, we did the other side of the block, but we make sure that you set your stroke at the bottom and at the top, so you have the proper amount of stick out on each end, and then um, the bottom. You want to make sure you don't hit the main webs or anything like that to blow your stones and your guides out. So, we'll take it right into the middle cylinder to start out with. Tighten it up. Where are we going here? gauge set for the proper bore that we want, which is 4 and 40.
there. Two and a half. Five. This was the tight cylinder.
So we'll go through and do these other three, and uh, then we'll show you the brushing. Okay, so we finished up all four cylinders here. Uh, I just wanted to show you the sort of finish that you're after with the stones. I can get in here so you can see. Probably not, but anyway, if you can tell the included angle, so the, the angle of, of the ups and the downs there uh, needs to come out to right about 45 degrees. And uh, you want that because you don't you don't want the rings. If it's steeper, the rings will want to rotate and wear out your ring lens. If it's shallower, then basically it's unnecessarily unnecessary wear on the rings. So um, this finish actually though is is um, not quite done. Uh, what we're going to do is take the brush to it. Um, you can see the pronounced lines and whatnot, and that's good. Good if you're if you're dropping a set of rings in here that need to break in with the cylinder and, and whatnot. Um, I'm actually using a set of rings that is with this, so they're, they've already been seated um, as far as been run, and so I'm going to take a brush to this, and it'll make more of a plateau hone to it. Um, the other thing you guys might be wondering is why I'm not running a torque plate on this. And uh, you probably gain a little bit with the torque plate on on this, but not a not a whole lot. The engine design itself, the actual the, the fastener bosses go all the way to the bottom, um, just above the crankcase, uh, and uh, and you can't totally get the the cylinder deflection out of it, but that that helps just the way that it, it was designed. So um, there's always going to be a little, even even with torque plates and everything, you're never going to get it perfect. Heat changes everything, that sort of thing. So um, this for for the application is is just fine. So anyway, we'll go ahead and run the brush through it, and uh, um, that'll that'll do it for this video. Um, we'll pick up with some other stuff after that, probably the rods. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, show you the brushing, and we'll go from there. All right. So the brush we're using um, this one's actually from Goodson. It's a little bit different. Um, normally use the dingle ball brush for just deglazing and if you're going to you know re-ring an engine or something like that something like this works really really good um, anyway but this brush here is, is a lot better for breaking down a fresh hone uh, just uh, you know you can, you can look up plateau honing if you want uh, but uh, basically it knocks down the big sharp edges Okay, so the brush actually doesn't take any dimensionally uh, main material out. It just just takes the, the peaks and even out, evens out the valleys and whatnot. Um, we'll get a close shot here. Exactly what this looks like after we're done compared to what before. So if you can tell, you, there's still cross hatching there, but it's a lot more fine. Still at the 45, but basically what this does, it keeps the makes it so the rings don't have to do as much work to seat. Um, it doesn't um, basically eat away more material, um, both in the block and the rings, to be able to get the ring to seat. So these rings will seat in a lot better. Um, it's 
the rotating assembly has total seal, total seal metal ring on it, and uh, there's only, like I said earlier in the video, um, you know, there, or the other video even, uh, the, you know, there's only 3,000 miles or so on this rot rotating assembly, so um, I think it'll go into place right here real well on this and and uh, seat, seat in real quick, so anyway, uh, on to the next video, hope you guys enjoy this.